Okay, today I'm going to be discussing my approach to evaluating melanocytic proliferations under the microscope. As you know, we have epidermal or junctional nevi that are situated primarily in the epidermis. We have dermal nevi that are situated primarily in the dermis, and then we have nevi that have components in both the epidermis and in the dermis, and we refer to those as compound nevi. Um, so most of my description re will revolve around um, dysplastic nevi, but I just want to show you an example of a very typical dermal nevus. And as you can see here, this is a punch biopsy down to the superficial subcutis and we have a proliferation that is filling the dermis. And at the superficial part of this proliferation, you can see that the constituent cells are organized in a nested array. And with descent into the dermis, these cells start to break apart into single cells. You will also see certain areas that look like vascular spaces, but actually represent just some pseudo, represent pseudovascular spaces, which you can sometimes see um, within benign nevi. So this phenomenon of nested melanocytes that break up into single melanocytes with descent into the dermis is, is something we call maturation. It's a phenomenon called maturation. And Another characteristic of maturation is that the nuclei of the melanocytes decrease with descent into the dermis as well. So that is a phenomenon you expect to see in benign melanocytic proliferations, and you lose that in uh, atypical proliferations. You can see how the melanocytes stream around at nexal structures. Those are eccrine ducts coming up through the, through the dermis and you can see the proliferation kind of streaming around those ducts. Um, so this is a benign dermal nevus. Another feature that can help you identify these as neva melanocytes is recognizing the presence of what we refer to as pseudonuclear inclusions. And those, there are these pale vacuole-like structures within the nucleus of the cells. And these, ref these are pseudonuclear inclusions that are characteristic of nevomelanocytes. So when you encounter a proliferation and you're wondering, could this be melanocytic? That is a very, very helpful feature to, that you can use to accurately identify the, the nevomelanocytes. Okay. So that is a dermal nevus. We have cells that are situated predominantly in the dermis, and they can extend all the way down through the dermis and even into the subcutaneous tissue. Um, in contrast, this is a compound nevus. And I just want to show you this to highlight that a compound nevus is comprised of nevomelanocytes that are nested and are situated in both the epidermis, as you can see here, and in small clusters as well within the dermis in this example. So this is a compound nevus. Okay. All right. Let's talk about an approach to looking at dysplastic nevi. So I usually start at low power when I'm evaluating um, atypical melanocytic proliferations under the microscope. And I'm trying to get a sense of symmetry. So I'm looking for clear circumscription, um, you know, an infiltrate, you know, either in the epidermis and or in the dermis that starts and stops fairly abruptly. And from end to end, assuming we're looking at the entire lesion, is um, roughly symmetric. So I'm looking to see whether the nests in the epidermis and or the dermis are evenly distributed. I'm looking to see if there is inflammation. Is it focal or is it spread out uniformly throughout the uh, melanocytic lesion. If there are melanophages, are they clustered in one focus or are they uniformly distributed throughout the lesion? And then I go in on, I go in a little bit 
medium power. And at this stage, I'm looking to see as well, am I looking at a junctional nevus? Is this compound? Is it um, purely dermal? Um, I look in the junction, are the melanocytes organized predominantly in nests? Or are they predominantly distributed as single units in the epidermis or a combination? I'm looking to see whether the nested component in the epidermis extends beyond the bulk of the dermal component. That's a phenomenon called shouldering. Shouldering describes the extension of the junctional nests several reedy ridges beyond the bulk of the dermal component, and that is an architectural criterion of atypia. I look at the placement of the nests in the junction. Are the nests predominantly at the tips of the reedy, or are we seeing them at the sides of the reedy, or up in the epidermis? Um, if there are single melanocytes, are they confluent all along the reedy pegs and all along the epidermis? Am I seeing single melanocytes extending beyond the basal epidermis and into the upper levels of the epidermis or granular layer? I look within the nest. Am I seeing significant clefting or discohesion within the nests in the junction? I'm also and you can see some clefting here. I'm also looking at the constituent cells in the nest. Are they roughly similar size and shape, or am I seeing significant nuclear and cytologic pleomorphism of the cells? Am I seeing hyperchromasia of the nuclei? The nucleus of a melanocyte should be smaller than that of the neighboring keratinocytes. So when you start to see melanocyte nuclei that approach the size of keratinocytes, then they are too big. And then we look for hyperchromasia of the melanocytes as well, because that's an atypical, cytologically atypical feature. So those are the things you're looking, you're asking yourself. Another feature is to look for that kind of dusky gray-brown coloration of the cytoplasm, which you can appreciate in this example. And, and that's another cytologic feature of atypia that we pay attention to. Then I'm looking at the stroma. The stroma tells you a lot about what's going on. So the stroma of dysplastic nevi tends to be fibrotic. So you'll see what we refer to as lamellar fibroplasia or periredal fibrosis. You can see sort of this fibrosis that wraps around the reedy pegs here. Um, and that is an architectural criterion of atypia that we pay attention to. And then I'm looking at the dermal component and I ask myself, is it demonstrating good maturation, assuming we have enough of the dermal component to evaluate? Uh, is it nested above and then breaking up into single cells with descent through the dermis? Um, am I seeing a, a diminution in nuclear size of the melanocytes from top to bottom? Um, these are, and then am I seeing mitotic figures? So I look very closely at the dermal component, study it and look for any atypical mitoses. And, um, and based on that, we grade uh, the uh, atypia and dysplastic nevi as mild, moderate, or severe. Not everybody uses that grading scheme, and some simply refer to these as dysplastic nevi without any grading. So there's, there's quite a bit of regional variation in terms of how we report these. One last feature I want to point out is bridging. Sometimes we see bridging from reedy to reedy of nests. So bridging of nests is another um, criterion of atypia that we pay attention to. And when you have confluence across multiple reedy, that's usually a, a worrisome feature. And it's important to distinguish bridging of nests from bridging of reedy. If you've got hyperplastic elongated reedy pegs, sometimes you'll see bridging of reedy. That must be distinguished from bridging of nests. Bridging of nests is really what we're concerned about. And that is my quick and dirty approach to evaluating dysplastic nevi histologically.